1978 Mustang King Cobra Mustang 2 King Cobra today I removed the master cylinder and when I removed the master cylinder this is the master cylinder right here I don't know if you can get a good shot of this um, we're in shade now so I guess you can see it you see all the fluid buildup right behind here so there's a seal in there and fluid should not be escaping through the master cylinder so the master cylinder was shot um, my foot was going down to the floor and so I knew sure sign of a master cylinder so I removed this and what I ran into though was because it had been leaking for so long this piece enters into here the shaft enters into the master cylinder it had been leaking so long that this seal here had been completely eaten and as you can tell you can see see that gap through the seal so that seal should be tight around the post and there was a gap and there's significant amounts of rust buildup here in the um, booster so this is the booster this is what holds air allows this piece to push into your master cylinder and it gives you power and so I decided to remove that piece as well um, removing the master cylinder is pretty simple it's two bolts and then you remove the master cylinder from the booster the booster is a different story so there we go. Maybe I'll tip the master cylinder that way. That way it's not leaking fluid all over my floor. So the booster has four bolts, and the bolts can be accessed from the inside, underneath, along the firewall. And so this is underneath the car, and up and along the firewall. So we have clutch pedal, brake pedal, gas. The brake pedal, first thing you need to remove is the wiring. The wiring harness is hooked up here at this pen. Okay. This just pops out. It's pretty easy to remove. Once you remove that, you can push aside the master cylinder clip that goes around this. Now that looks like this piece here. This goes on to the master cylinder pin, and this is what your wiring is pushed into. So this is your wiring piece. A little gasket will pop out with it, okay? And then you push your pin off to the side, which allows you to freely move your brake pedal around. Now you can remove your brake pedal. It does give you easier access, but you don't have to as long as you've got the right extensions. You do need, I believe it's a 9 16 And let me make sure. Yep, 9 16 to remove all four bolts. The hardest one to get to is the upper, upper piece. And in order to get that upper bolt out, this is what I used. 9 16ths deep socket and a stubby extension. So I don't know what these extensions are called, but standard size extensions are this size. And as you can tell, that's quite a bit shorter, smaller than the standard extension. So that will allow you to, and I used a pivoting head ratchet. This makes life so much easier. With a standard, um, solid head ratchet. I'm not sure if I could have gotten it out. The pivoting head comes in handy. You can use a large extension on the top furthest uh, left-hand side bolt. So one thing I will say that I did find in underneath my dash, um, I do not have a lot of rust in this car which is excellent, but I am finding quite a bit of rust buildup in underneath the dash, and that is one place where a lot of people don't pay attention to. Um, and in the crawl, 
this is where rain goes, settles, and causes issues. And so, and underneath that, you will have some rust issues. And so I've noticed I've got some superficial rust issues on pretty much everything inside the car. Um, and underneath the dash, if you can see, that's dark. So the steering column's dark. Um, foot pedal is now turning dark, which is nice. It doesn't look very rusted anymore. But I don't know if I can get up in here. So do you see the pockets of black? Okay, so all that is rust, and that is very far back up in there. Um, there are several places where I can't catch, I can't reach, actually, without removing the entire dash. So at some point, I will end up removing the entire dash and treating 100% of the metal that I'm seeing, but... What I am using is Loctite Extended Rust Neutralizer. This stuff is magic in a bottle. Turns rust into black, paintable surface. You do need rust existing on the surface, so... Um, good example of that, and it's really hard to explain why you need rust on the surface, but you need rust in order to activate the the components. So as you can see, I'm trying it on my headers. I do not know how it works on headers. Once I put the brake master cylinder and the, the booster back, I'm going to start up the motor um, and see if this actually burns off or causes issues on the headers. But you can tell a huge difference from this header compared to this header here. And these are lightly brushed with a steel steel wire um, just to get, you know, layered chunky rust off. But in order to activate this paint or brush on rust neutralizer, you must keep some rust on the surface. So superficial rust is totally fine. And that is what activates it. So I will let you know once I start the car off up if I'm experiencing a significant amount of burnoff. Um, and if this lasts, I don't know yet. Uh, if it does, I'm going to douse the headers in this stuff um, and brush it on all the way back um, up to the end of the exhaust. So until then, though, uh, master cylinder is going in tomorrow. I found a brake booster at O'Reilly's. Napa didn't have it. Oh, no. Um... The only reason why I prefer Napa right now, we're in a quarantine, not quarantine, but, you know, stay-at-home order. So, Napa's a mile away from my house. Um, O'Reilly's is a little bit further, so that's that's fine. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's how you remove the power booster and master cylinder off of a Mustang 2.